All right, today's challenge is to take a swing at the all too common torque converter shutter in this 2011 Subaru Outback 3.6 liter. Uh, that's a six cylinder, folks, uh, with the five EAT, five speed, not CVT transmission. So, um, Basically, it's kind of a, a plague among a lot of Subarus that they develop a torque converter shutter, and there's two schools of thought. One, that the torque converter clutch itself, which is an integral part inside the torque converter, is uh, worn out. And the other thought is that it's not getting proper hydraulic pressure to engage because of a problem with the solenoid. So uh, I'm going to have the the bottom of the transmission off. I'm going to drop the pan. I'm going to uh, pull out the valve body and check out that particular torque converter clutch lockup solenoid and see if we can clean it up. Okay, first step is a 14 millimeter wrench to pop off the drain plug on the Transmission pan, and I recommend you capture the uh, capture the fluid as as well as you can because it'll give you the opportunity to measure it when you're done. And uh, so, all right, yeah. it's drained about as much as it's going to drain out of the uh, out of the drain plug. So I'm just going to loosely put in the the plug. And I've loosened up, I've removed all the bolts all the way around, left the front three in loosely so that the pan can uh, tip down and I can capture some more fluid in it. Uh, but what I got to do now is break the seal that's around the uh, edge of the edge of the pan. Okay, next I'm going to disconnect the three connectors that are uh, tying the car's wiring harness into the valve body. There's one, here's two, this little red one here, and then here's three, the black one next to it. All right. And they have these little metal metal these uh, capture arms here so you pull that out of the way and we're pretty much ready to start unbolting all right there's a number of black bolts that hold in the valve body so they're pretty obvious uh, they're most of them around this end and down on this end you've got uh, you got some more black bolts down around here and you've got these two silver bolts that have to come out and these are 40 millimeter the rest of the black ones are 30 millimeters long okay and when it comes loose you will get a bit of a leak, so be prepared for that. I wasn't. Alright, it's pretty much stopped running, so I'm going to pop out the last bolt and drop it. Whoops, I missed one. Got Okay, now that we got this out, this is the torque converter clutch lockup solenoid. So the trick to getting it out is to remove the this little metal uh, keeper that's above it. It's held on with two 10 millimeter bolts. Okay. 
and once that's out, should be able to pull it out and examine it. Okay, I'm going to uh, go ahead and release the uh, little clip that holds it in. All right, and now it's just a matter, I'm going to clean it, and for lack of a better technique, I'm going to use some brake cleaner on it to try to uh, see if I can liberate any gunk or junk that might have lodged itself inside it, uh, and see if that helps the shifting. All right, now just... Uh, Next step, I just slide slide that uh, solenoid back into place. Um, start the two bolts. I'll go ahead and plug it in so I don't forget to do that. Make sure you get the ground clip under this bolt. And make sure you haven't left anything else undone. And then just tighten them down. And... Do the final snugging with a uh, regular wrench so you can get a feel for how tight it is. All right, so we are ready to put this back into the car. Okay, you just want to make sure that all the mating surfaces are perfectly clean and ready to mate up with the, uh, the valve body. Uh, Got your dipstick here, so don't bend that when you're wiping it down. Uh, get your cables out of the way. You'll worry about cleaning up the um, the bottom of the pan interface later, uh, but that's pretty good. I'm gonna go get the valve body. I got to readjust a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And again, this this notch corresponds to this little this little guy here and we are engaged and now since I got it up I got to put start putting uh, a couple bolts in to hold it in place Okay, so once again, uh, about 70 inch pounds, go around, tighten down all of them. It's time to start reconnecting these plugs. And first the one that I forgot to take off. Oh my. This one over here. Make sure you get a nice mechanical click. Okay, we got the red to blue. Nice click. Big black plug. Nice click. All right. And then we put the strain relief and uh, holders back into place. And just a close-up so you can see the uh, 
this little disc on the shifter, how it's centered in this uh, in the the niche in this rod, and you can see it's very tight. There's very little movement in there. So uh, at this point, folks, we're pretty much ready to start uh, buttoning up the job. We got to get the pan ready to go back on. All right, and there's a lot of ways to skin this cat, but uh, since I'm in a shop that happens to have a die grinder and a uh, and a uh, and a Scotch grape Scotch Bright pad, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that to do some low level abrasion. Okay, use a little brake cleaner for the final, final pass, and some clean paper towels or shop towels. And there we go, folks. It's plenty clean enough. I didn't worry too much about the bottom. Uh, you'll notice that I didn't get every speck off, but this. You'll notice this is recessed in here. It's really not going to matter at all. What all that matters is this this raised section, and I'm going to run a bead of RTV uh, transmission specialized uh, RTV around the outside, and then uh, we'll be ready to reinstall it. I've seen lots of different kinds of RTV uh, used. I've used this before to great success. It's the uh, automatic transmission gasket maker. Open it up a little bit more and start applying the bead around the inside down the flats where it contacts the, the actual transmission and inside the bolt holes. All right, and in preparation, I'm going to clean this surface, which is actually very clean to start with, uh, but I'm going to hit it with a little, little brake cleaner and a clean rag uh, just to get the rest of the, any dripping uh, transmission fluid off it. All right. And I'll finish up with a dry one. as good as that's going to get and this gets placed pretty carefully don't get fooled by that what looks like a bolt hole in the corner because it really isn't let's see we get one of them on over here and the trick here folks is you just want these basically finger tight is that lined up Started to do up this. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just let's see. It's lined up.
Okay, and you can see uh, here at the very edge, you can see that even that tiny bit of finger tight tightness has produced a flow of RTV literally all the way around. Uh, so that means that the amount was proper and the tension is proper. So now all that remains is stopping for uh, actually about an hour and then we'll be able to torque them down to full tightness. But it needs about an hour to cure followed by final torquing. Okay, and this would be a good time to remind yourself that you really do want to snug down the drain bolt or you're going to be building in a new and exciting problem. All right, a full hour has elapsed. It's time to torque these down. They get torqued to 3.7 foot-pounds, which is even less than the bolts in the, uh, in the valve body, so be very careful you don't overdo it. Just... There it is. That's all you hear. And then you want to do this in a kind of a star pattern. You want to go back and forth across the pan so you're not tightening one side down. Uh, because it'll start, uh, you might end up with a pan that's not quite square, and you don't want that, so. Okay, folks, at this point we're done with this, and all we got to do is wait overnight to actually put the fluid back in it. So, uh, we'll catch you tomorrow. Okay, and about 20 hours have elapsed. The, uh, the sealant on the transmission pan will have well and truly set up. It's time to fill the transmission once again. Uh, now normally, uh, if you followed my advice and you captured all the fluid that came out in the various uh, various tidal waves, you would have known how much you need to put back in by just measuring it in uh, other bottles. Uh, I don't have the ability to do that. I spilled enough. I really don't have any confidence. I know exactly how much it was, but I'm gonna start by putting five quarts and in this particular car, the easiest way to do that is through the dipstick hole, which is uh, large enough for a fairly decent sized funnel. And of course, I've come stocked with uh, plenty of ATF, which you want to have for your car, no matter what type it is. So you can do flushes and drain and fills anytime you like. Okay, nice and dry. Okay, five quarts down the hole. Now the trick is wait for it to drain out of the uh, out of the funnel. Pull the funnel. Uh, put the dipstick back in and start it up. Shift through the gears slowly a couple times and then see where we're at. I fully expect it will be at least a quart low. So let's uh, let's give it a shot. Okay, the dipstick will be pretty much covered up from the fluid going down the tube to fill up the uh, transmission. So wipe it off, reinsert it. And uh, although there's some fluid on the, on the dipstick from, um, you can't see it, there's a little bit of fluid on it. You can see the center is dry. You can see it if I put it in front of the lens, that is. 
Uh, so none of the holes are filled, so we're still well below uh, even low cold mode. So I'm going to put another quart in it and see where we're at. All right, I've been running the car for a while. Uh, you'll notice I got, even though it's a cool day here in uh, Illinois, I got the, the AC on full blast because that generates more heat, puts warms up the uh, coolant faster, which warms up the transmission uh, cooler in the radiator faster. Uh, I do have my scanner here. You can see I've got it set so that I can monitor the automatic transmission fluid temperature. It's over 40, which is where we want it to be able to do a final measurement. Uh, I did put another quart and a half in, so we're now at eight and a half quarts. So uh, for the final check here, I hope, I'm going to go ahead, shift through the gears, leave it in uh, each gear for a couple seconds. That sends the fluid through all the passages and all the solenoids and all the places that it's supposed to be under normal operating conditions so that we get a proper fluid level check. Okay. All right, let's go check some fluid. Leave the car running. All right, and And we're right there. If you can see that, we're right at the top of the full height. It's right there, which is absolute perfection. So we have now filled up the transmission and we're ready for a test drive. <laughs> 